You know, a good skincare routine is everything and finding products that will work for you can really be trial and error. And skincare companies, well, they lean really heavily on promises that maybe push the envelope just a tad. All right, it pushes the envelope a lot. So if you're ready to find out some skincare products and ingredients that you should absolutely avoid all the time in your skincare routine, this video is for you. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Chris, I'm a skincare expert here on YouTube and I help people find skincare that will work for them, not empty their wallets and not do more harm than good. So if that's the kind of content that you're interested in, please be sure and subscribe, hit the little notification bell so that you know when my new videos are up each week. Now, before we jump into today's video, the five things you should avoid in your skincare routine, I wanted to take a quick moment because I've been getting a lot of questions about my social media. I will put the list of all my social media down below in the video description box so you can follow me on Instagram. That one's right there. Also, I have Facebook, of course, Chris Gibson Friends, at Facebook. I have two Instagram accounts, Skin So Fabulous and Chris Gibson Friends, both of those I'm very active on. And of course, the interactive blog, Skin So Fabulous, which I highly recommend you check out when you get done with the video. Again, that link will be below in the video description box because it's an interactive blog where I actually answer questions. We do contests over there that we don't do on YouTube. We give tons of skincare products away for free, and it's just a heck of a lot of fun if you're into skincare, it's a good place to be. So Skin So Fabulous, you can find it if you Google it, but also the link will be down below. Okay, so many of us spend, 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 this is gonna take a minute, spend, 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 just tons of money on skincare products. And many of those formulations and products I have reviewed here on the channel. So I wanted to simplify things by giving you a video of things not to have in your skincare routine, not to do in your skincare routine to avoid. And I kept it down to the main five. And some of these I've talked about before on the channel in different videos, but today I'm putting them all together for you in one. The very first of which is a product that you never, ever, ever hear me recommend here on my YouTube channel, and that is makeup wipes. And I have a very good reason for that. Makeup wipes are textural. They can be very rough on the skin. They also usually have alcohol or witch hazel or some astringent ingredient in their formulation to help break down makeup, clearly so, and remove it. But that can be very over drying to skin, very harsh to skin, especially if you have dry skin or sensitive skin. And it can even be a problem for extra oily skin because stripping too much oil does what? Makes your skin produce more. The other thing that I don't like about makeup wipes is they make you pull and stretch your skin on your face, which is a big no-no. We do not want to be pulling and stretching our skin on our face. We want to protect the collagen and elastin fibers in the skin layer, so that's a big no-no. So I don't like them. Instead, think about using things like an oil cleanse or a gentle cleanser that's formulated for makeup removal. Also, you can do a double cleanse. You can also use, which I usually recommend, a micellar water step as part of that double cleanse. The micellar water will help break down the makeup and oils and allow your face wash to do the job of removing them. So definitely makeup wipes on my no-no list. Next is another product that you guys have heard me talk about many times on the channel that I don't like, and that's alcohol-based toners. They can be too astringent. Any formulation that includes alcohols, denatured alcohol, stay away from that for your skin. It's just too drying and toners are usually really not necessary these days with the skincare products and the way they're formulated. If you have a little extra oiliness or you have a pH balance problem, a toner that is designed to help improve your pH balance rather than be astringent or oil removing is a better choice. I personally like essence sprays for hydration. I think they're wonderful rose water essence sprays. I talk about those on the channel a lot, especially here in Florida in the summer. Psst, psst, and you get this refreshing mist of moisture on your skin that does not dry your skin out. And again, we do not want to remove too much oil from the skin because it's going to cause more oil production. And I can tell you, as a child with acne of the 80s, yeah, that was pushed in our face constantly. Every skincare 
product line. And I'm talking about everything from Clinique all the way to Noxzema, all the way to Persagel or benzoyl peroxide products, always had a toner step in them. Too astringent made my acne worse. Of course, it took me a long time to figure that out. So stay away from toners unless you need a misting type toner that's going to balance the pH and help moisturize your skin. That's fine. Next up on my list are vitamin C serums and moisturizers, because these are the two main ones, and peptides are third serums and moisturization products that are super hyped and overpriced not necessary in your skincare routine i just had a question on the channel about luxury brand moisturizers are they really necessary and here's what i have to say on this channel about all of this on this channel we focus on ingredients and effectiveness over brand names and pricing. And I know everybody has their favorites and if you have a formulation that you really love and it works well for you, I'm not telling you don't buy it. I'm just saying a lot of us are on budgets and we think that the moisturizer is the real deal and it's not. And wasting a lot of money on a moisturizer, two or $300 is just ridiculous. You can get many, many products that are formulated similarly. <laughs> formulated similarly, I can't t talk today. Anyway, you get what I mean. You can get products that have the same ingredients that will do the same effects for far less. Now, vitamin C serums, here again is another product that is really overpriced and I have reviewed several of these on the channel that were over $100 to $150. You don't need to spend that on a vitamin C serum. The ingredients, two ingredients you have to look for are L-ascorbic acid of at least 15% to be effective, also, you need to look for sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which is a derivative of vitamin C that works just as well as L-ascorbic acid, but is much milder and more stable. And usually those particular vitamin C serums run a lot less money. So I've got tons of videos about that on the channel. I will link to all these videos that I'm talking about today. And I will also give you guys a list of products that I recommend in each of these areas. I'm not going to do a product demonstration on this video because I've done so many of them, but the list will be down below as well in the video description box. And while we're on that topic, if you don't know how to expand that, because YouTube doesn't make it easy. Underneath this video on the right side is a little down arrow. If you click that, it will expand that box and you'll have access to all of this information. Now, moving on, we're going to talk about something that is very controversial and it's not really a skincare product per se, although the ingredient is in formulations. And let me start off by saying if this ingredient of coconut oil is in a formulation, that's probably fine for your skin as a moisturizing lotion, especially body lotion. What I'm talking about here is putting coconut oil, raw, pure coconut oil that you would cook with, have in the kitchen, we have it here, love it, it's great in your diet, on your skin, other than areas that are extremely dry or chapped. So knees, elbows, feet, perfectly fine for a coconut oil treatment, but not on the face. Coconut oil is so comedogenic, and for you guys like me that have any kind of scruff, that oil gets down around that hair follicle and hardens and blocks the bacteria and oil that would be expelled naturally and you get all kinds of problems. I deal with this in clients all the time of every race and every color. So I know that darker skin folks really love coconut oil and it works very well for their skin except on the face. Our pores on our face are very small and they're susceptible to more bacteria. We touch our face all the time. So please avoid coconut oil at all costs. And if you think this isn't a controversial subject, you should check out the video I did on this, on coconut oil. Woo! It's gotten a lot of views and it has a lot of commentary back and forth. So if you're in the mood or have time and want to read some really funny stuff, you should read that video's comments. But anyway, suffice to say, coconut oil, great in your diet. It's good for you. It's good for things like chafing, chapping, very rough, dry, cracked skin. Perfectly fine, just not on the face. Now, these next two ingredients that are in sunscreen are going to be no surprise to you if you watch my channel at all, because I hate them. And that is octanoxate and oxybenzone. And the reason, well, I don't hate them, but I don't like them and I won't put them on my body. And here's why. Those two chemicals in sunscreen have been proven, proven, clinically proven to be able to penetrate the blood barrier. They're also proven to be hormone disruptors. So they are problematical, and I have a lot of conjecture that comes back on the channel sometimes in comments about this, because it is harder to find sunscreens, chemical sunscreens that don't have these. However, 
it is what it is. They are not good for you. They are not good for our ocean marine life. They cause all kinds of problems. They're banned in Hawaii. They're banned here in Florida. They're banned in resorts in Mexico and Australia. And that list grows every single year. They're just a problem. Please try to stay away from them. Now, if you're going to use a chemical sunscreen, I get it. They're hard to find without it. Avobenzone, which I still don't like because it's in that same family, has been shown to be safe, does not penetrate the blood barrier, even though I bash it routinely as a chemical in chemical sunscreen. If you're going to do the chemical sunscreen, it's okay. You can use that one. It's, it's, it's safe. It's the least evil of the three. Personally, as you guys know, I like mineral sunscreens. They have come so far. They don't leave that white sheen on your skin anymore, especially the really good ones. Just like this one here, which I use routinely, Neutrogena's, sheer zinc for the face, SPF 50, but there are many, many zinc sunscreens that you can use under makeup, on top of makeup as a powder. Just be sure you're using your sunscreen, 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 sunscreen. Did I tell you, you need to use sunscreen. And to say one more time, I do recommend products in each of these areas. I will put that list down below in the video description box for you, rather than have you search for every single video on these topics. So going to try to make this easy for all of us. I hope this video today was helpful in understanding things you should avoid in your skincare routine. I have several videos like this. However, this is the most condensed one. So this is what you really need to know. If you avoid these, you're going to help your skin out and your skincare routine a whole, whole lot. Be sure to check out the videos that are coming up next because they're going to help you perfect your skincare routine for your best skin ever. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel. You know how much I appreciate it. I love you. Stay beautiful and I'll see you over on that next video.